Hello, my name is Carolina Vivo. I'm one of the high-risk obstetricians at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Today, we're here to talk about twin pregnancies. Having twins can be very exciting but overwhelming at the same time. I wanna let you know that even though twin pregnancies are at a higher risk of complications, for the most part, twins do extremely well. So there's different kinds of twins and the calcification depends on the type of placenta that they have and the amniotic sacs. There's four kinds of twins. The first set of twins are the most common, they're the dichorionic diamniotic twins. These twins, they each have their sac and their placenta and they live in the same uterus. So these twins, they share the same uterine environment but they each have their placenta and their amniotic sac. Because of this, then these are the twins that have the least complications. So the other type of twins are monochorionic diamniotic twins. These twins, they share the placenta, but they each have their amniotic sac. Because they share the placenta, they can share blood supply between them, and they can have a little bit more complications. So the third set of twins are a little bit more rare, and they're monochorionic monoamniotic twins. These twins, they live in the same uterine environment, and they share both the placenta and the amniotic sac. Because the babies are lying in the same sac, what happens is that the cords can get entangled and they can suffer from some of those complications. So the last type of twins are the least common, and these are the conjoined twins. So what happens with these twins, they're monoamniotic, monochorionic twins, and they share the placenta, the amniotic sac, and what happens is that they're also sharing an organ, so sometimes they share the brain, or the heart or the gastrointestinal system and they're connected so obviously they have major complications. So because you have twins you're going to be seen more often by your doctor. You're expected to have office visits between two to four weeks and you're going to have more frequent ultrasounds between two to four weeks as well. So at the beginning of your pregnancy, your doctor is going to make sure that everything is going on the right track. The important thing is to make sure that there's no genetic abnormalities with your babies. So what's going to happen is depending on your gestational age and the hospital setting where you are, you're going to be offered genetic screening. This depending on uh, what your doctor decides might be a combination of an ultrasound test and also a blood work test and depending on the values you're going to have a risk value for that pregnancy telling you if you're at a higher risk of having a baby with genetical problems. During the second trimester, you're also going to be offered an anatomy scan where your babies are going to have a full ultrasound where they're going to see all the structures to make sure that there's no structural abnormalities. So the difficult thing with twins is that one of the babies can have a chromosomal abnormality or a structural abnormality and the other baby doesn't have it. So it is a difficult situation and therefore definitely we would recommend a consult with a high risk obstetrician to further decide what to do about the pregnancy and how to further manage this. So having twin pregnancies can be challenging. You're gonna have a bigger abdomen, you're gonna feel that you're full more often, and it's gonna be hard for you to consume all your required calories. So one of the things that we suggest is that you have a visit with a nutritionist to sort of help you um, understand your daily calorie requirements and the high nutritious uh, foods that you need to eat. It is important that you have small frequent snacks and that you um, use a lot of protein shakes so that you're getting all um, your value on your small meals. So when you're pregnant with twins, you're gonna experience a lot more back pain and sciatica, which is pain that starts on your back and goes down your leg. It is very important that you know that this is very common and is not a reason to be concerned. The other problem that you might experience is to have heartburn. This is an acid reflex that you're gonna feel that is very uncomfortable and is definitely gonna make it a little bit difficult for you to eat. So it is important that you tell your doctor so your doctor can prescribe you some medication that is totally safe in pregnancy so that you can continue to keep up with your nutrition and have no problems. Again, it's not a reason to be concerned. So when you're talking to your doctor about the delivery of your twins, it's gonna depend on the kind of twins that you have. 
If you have uncomplicated dichorionic diamagnetic twins, your doctor is going to deliver you around 38 weeks. If you have uncomplicated monochorionic diamagnetic twins, we usually deliver you about 37 weeks. And if you have mono-mono twins, your doctor is probably going to deliver you between 32 to 34 weeks. So the fact that you're having twins does not mean that you need a C-section. If the first baby is head down, that's a presenting twin, you can definitely have a vaginal delivery. If the first baby is head up, meaning that the buttocks is down, then you will need a C-section. The first twin is head down and the second twin is either lying transverse or breech, meaning that the head is not down, definitely you're still a candidate for a vaginal delivery. You're going to have a conversation with your doctor to discuss um, the interventions that could be done with the second twin, including an external cephalic version or an internal podalic version, which means to deliver the baby as a breech. So preterm birth is fairly common in twin pregnancies. It, ha it happens in about half of the pregnancies, and the average gestational age of delivery is around 36 weeks. Unfortunately for twins, we don't have many interventions, but you will see that your doctor is going to tell you about all the symptoms of preterm birth. The most important thing about twin pregnancies is that if your baby is born prematurely, this baby might be affected and you may have problems with breathing, problems swallowing, problems feeding. So we'll definitely keep you pregnant as far as we can so that we avoid these complications. So growth restriction is one of the other complications you can have in your twin pregnancy. When we talk about growth restriction is what we follow with the growth ultrasounds and is when your baby is measuring a less than 10 percentile of the growth curve for that gestational age. Growth restriction can affect one or two of the babies and it is very important that you follow closely with visits to your doctor and with the ultrasounds. So what happens with growth restriction is that your baby is not getting the nutritional needs that your babies need, either one or two, depending on if, if the growth restriction is affecting one or both babies. What happens with growth restriction is that if your baby is not growing well or is not reaching the goals that we want, you might need an earlier delivery and your baby might suffer from the complications of premature. So twin to twin transfusion syndrome is also known as TTTS. If you look about it on the internet, you're gonna be very scared. It's important to let you know that it's a very rare complication and it only happens in monochorionic twins. And what happens is that when the twins are sharing the placenta, they can share blood supplies, vascular connections, and one of the twins gets most of the blood supply and the other twin doesn't, and this definitely causes the twins to have complications. Because they share those blood vessels, one of the babies is gonna donate most of that blood supply to the other baby, one of them is going to become the donor twin, which is going to get really small and it's going to shrink because it's donating all the blood to the other baby. And then the other baby is going to suffer the consequences of having all this extra blood flowing to the system. It's going to have extra fluid in the lungs or in the heart or in the belly and it's going to develop something called high drops. Twin to twin transfusion syndrome has different stages one being the best out of those and then uh, five being the worst. And most cases it stay in the stage one. So twin to twin transfusion is diagnosed by ultrasound. That's why your doctor, if you have monochorionic twins, is gonna ask you to have ultrasounds every two weeks. Your doctor is gonna be looking for the signs of TTTS. The official diagnosis is with one twin has oligohydramnios, which is little fluid in the amniotic sac, and the other twin has extra fluid, that's called polyhydramnios. Once the diagnosis is made, it usually stays in the stage one, which is not severe. It needs to be followed very closely with serial ultrasounds and the thing that is important to know is that most pregnancies that are affected by twin to twin transfusion stage stay in the stage one and that do not have any further complications. So a common complication of twin pregnancies is that moms might develop hypertension. This usually starts after the 20 week of the pregnancy and what happens is that your blood pressure is gonna be higher than 140 over 90 and you need to be followed up closely. If hypertension is accompanied by the spilling of protein in the urine or lab abnormalities or symptoms, that's a diagnosis of preeclampsia. If you have either hypertension or preeclampsia, you might need medication to control your blood pressure. You might need to be admitted to the hospital. And again, you might need an earlier delivery.
So diabetes is fairly common in twin pregnancies. What happens in twin pregnancies is that you have a larger placental size that is secreting hormones that make you to be more predisposed of developing diabetes. This diabetes is usually what we call gestational diabetes, meaning that you get diagnosed during the pregnancy, but then it goes away after pregnancy. If you get this diagnosis, all it means is that you need to check your blood sugars. You might control it very well with just diet and exercise, but you might need medication which is safe in pregnancy. So if you have complications, especially with your monochorionic twins, your doctor will definitely consult one of the maternal fetal medicine doctors and either help you carry your pregnancy father along together as a team or might decide that it's safer for you to be transferred to a maternal fetal medicine specialist. So the fact that you're having a complication with your pregnancy does not mean that you need to see a maternal fetal medicine doctor. What's going to happen is depending on the complication, your doctor is going to counsel you, you're going to follow up, and then depending on how the pregnancy is going, you might just see an MFM doctor for just one consult, or you might be transferred to a maternal fetal medicine um, specialist group. So congratulations on your twin pregnancy. We understand that it might be exciting and a difficult time for you. It is important that you know that you're going to need a little bit of extra help, so you make sure that you ask for that help either to your friends or family or to your group of doctors. Congratulations again, and just remember that even though you're having twins does not mean that you need to be concerned. It can be a fun adventure and will help you get along with that 